Good morning. morning. Let's begin this service by singing hymn number 34. Christ comes again with holy power to lift our blinded eyes to see the sick are healed, the sinner blessed, as on that eve in Galilee. Hymn 34. scriptural selection is from the Gospel of Matthew. Excuse me. I'll be reading from the New English Bible. Jesus began to proclaim the message, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is upon you. When he saw the crowds, he went up the hill. There he took his seat. And when his disciples had gathered round him, he began to address them. And this is the teaching he gave. How blessed are those who know their need of God. The kingdom of heaven is theirs. How blessed are the sorrowful. They shall find consolation. How blessed are those of a gentle spirit. They shall have the earth for their possession. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst to see right prevail. They shall be satisfied. How blessed are those who show mercy, mercy shall be shown to them. How blessed are those whose hearts are pure, they shall see God. How blessed are the peacemakers, God shall call them his sons. How blessed are those who have suffered persecution for the cause of right, the kingdom of heaven is theirs. How blessed are how blessed you are when you suffer insults and persecution and every kind of calumny for my sake. Accept it with gladness and exaltation, for you have a rich reward in heaven, in the same way they persecuted the prophets before you. You are the salt of the world, and if salt becomes tasteless, how is its saltness to be restored? 
It is now good for nothing to be thrown out and trodden underfoot. You are the light for all the world. A town that stands on a hill cannot be hidden. <clears throat> when a lamp is lit, it is not put under the meal tub, but on the lampstand, where it gives light to everyone in the house. And you, like the lamp, must shed light among your fellows, so that when they see the good you do, they may give praise to your Father in heaven. You have learned that they were told, eye for eye, tooth for tooth. But what I tell you is this, do not set yourself against the man who wrongs you. If someone slaps you on the right cheek, turn and offer him your left. If a man wants to sue you for your shirt, let him have your coat as well. If a man in authority makes you to go one mile, go with him too. Give when you are asked to give, and do not turn your back on a man who wants to borrow. You have learned that they were told, love your neighbor, hate your enemy. But what I tell you is this, love your enemies and pray for your persecutors. Only so can you be children of your heavenly Father, who makes his sun rise on good and bad alike, and sends the rain on the honest and the dishonest. If you love only those who love you, what reward can you expect? Surely the tax gatherers do as much as that. And if you greet heathen, excuse me, if you greet only your brothers, what is there extraordinary about that? Even the heathen do as much. There must be no limit to your goodness, as your heavenly Father's goodness knows no bounds. I bid you put away anxious thoughts about food and drink to keep you alive and clothes to cover your body. Surely life is more than food, the body more than clothes. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow and reap and store in barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. You are worth more than the birds. Set your mind on God's kingdom and his justice before everything else, and all the rest will come to you as well. Pass no judgment, and you will not be judged. For as you judge others, so will you yourself be judged. And whatever measure you deal out to others will be dealt back to you. Always treat others as you would like them to treat you. That is the law and the prophets. Enter by the narrow gate. The gate is wide that leads to perdition. There is plenty of room on the road, and many go that way. But the gate that leads to life is small, and the road narrow, and those who find it are few. When Jesus had finished this discourse, the people were astounded his, at his teaching. Unlike their own teachers, he taught with a note of authority. Please join now in a few moments of silent prayer and then pray together the Lord's Prayer with its spiritual interpretation given in the Christian Science textbook. Our Father, which art in heaven. Our Father, Mother, God, all harmonious. Hallowed be thy name. <clears throat> Adorable one. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom is come. Thou art ever present. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. 
Enable us to know, as in heaven, so on earth, God is omnipotent, supreme. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us grace for today. Feed the famished affections. And forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And love is reflected in love. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And God leadeth us not into temptation, but delivereth us from sin, disease, and death. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. For God is infinite, all power, all life, truth, love, over all and all. Our second hymn this morning is number 96. He stood of old, the holy Christ, amid the suffering throng, with whom his lightest touch sufficed to make the weakest strong. That healing gift God gives to them who use it in his name. The power that filled the garment's hem is evermore the same. Hymn number 96. Members of this church extend a loving welcome to those who are visiting us this morning. This church is a branch of the Mother Church, the first church of Christ scientist in Boston, Massachusetts, a church designed, in the words of its founder, Mary Baker Eddy, to commemorate the word and works of our master, which should reinstate primitive Christianity and its lost element of healing. If you are visiting us today and would like more information about Christian science, please ask the usher for assistance, or if you are joining us by Zoom, send us an email or give us a phone call. We'll be glad to help. 
The email address and the phone number are both found on our website and in the Zoom link email. If you would like complimentary copies of the Bible and Science and Health, just let us know. We'll be happy to give you copies. A Sunday school for children and teenagers meets every Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. Students are taught the scriptures and the healing truths of Christian science and their use in daily life. In our reading room, the Bible, as well as the writings of Mary Baker Eddy and other Christian science literature, may be studied, borrowed, or purchased. The reading room is officially open after each Sunday service and before each Wednesday evening meeting, but every member of the church has a key. We'll be happy to open the reading room for you by appointment anytime you wish. Should you wish to express your gratitude for Christian science by becoming a member of the Mother Church or of this branch church, please ask our usher to get you in touch with our clerk for more information. And please know you do not need to live in Miami to be a member of this church. You, your family and friends are warmly invited to a special lecture sponsored by this church. Lecturer Julia Nessie Tetro, CSB, will speak on the topic, Learning to Love Your Enemies. The lecture will take place this afternoon at 2 p.m. in this church auditorium. For those who cannot attend in person, the lecture will be streamed on our church's website. The website address is christianscienceThirdChurchMiami.com. That again, christianscienceThirdChurchMiami.com and the third is spelled out. We hope each of you will attend and bring family members and friends to this inspirational talk. One important note, remember next Sunday, we go back to daylight savings time. Please set your clocks appropriately, otherwise you'll miss the service. Thank you for being here today, each, whether in person or joining us by Zoom. Each of you is a valued part of our congregation. This being the first Sunday of the month, I will read from the Manual of the Mother Church by Mary Baker Eddy, Article 8, Section 1, A Rule for Motives and Acts. Neither animosity nor mere personal attachment should impel the motives or acts of the members of the Mother Church. In science, divine love alone governs man, and a Christian scientist reflects the sweet amenities of love in rebuking sin, in true brotherliness, charitableness, and forgiveness. The members of this church should daily watch and pray to be delivered from all evil, from prophesying, judging, condemning, counseling, influencing, or being influenced erroneously. The words of the solo this morning are a poem by our beloved leader, Mary Baker Eddy.
Friends, the Bible and the Christian Science textbook are our only preachers. We shall now read scriptural texts and their correlative passages from our denominational textbook. These comprise our sermon. The canonical writings, together with the word of our textbook, corroborating and explain the Bible text in their spiritual import and application to all ages, past, present, and future, constitute a sermon undivorced from truth uncontaminated and unfettered by human hypotheses and divinely authorized. The lesson for today begins at page 40 of the Christian Science Quarterly. Subject, Christ Jesus. The golden text is from 1 Timothy. There is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus. Responsive reading is from 1 Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. To an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. That the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though of it be tried with fire, 
might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Whom, having not seen, ye love. In whom, though now ye see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. Of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord endureth forever, and this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. The following citations comprise our sermon. The Bible, Deuteronomy, Moses called all Israel and said unto them, Hear, O Israel, the statutes and judgments which I speak in your ears this day, that ye may learn them and keep and do them. Thou shalt be perfect with the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, of, of thy brethren, like unto me. Unto him ye shall hearken. Isaiah, thus saith the Lord, thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. Behold my servant, whom I uphold, mine elect, in whom my soul delighteth. I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. I, the Lord, have called thee in righteousness, and will hold thine hand, and will keep thee, and give thee for a covenant of the people, for a light of the Gentiles to open the blind eyes, to bring out the prisoners from the prison, and them that sit in darkness out of the prison house. John, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John bare witness of him and cried, saying, This was he of whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. And of his fullness have all we received, and grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. And I saw and bear record that this is the Son of God. As was announced in the explanatory note, I will now read correlative passages from the Christian Science textbook, Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures by Mary Baker Eddy. The ancient prophets gained their foresight from a spiritual, incorporeal standpoint, not by foreshadowing evil and mistaking fact for fiction, predicting the future from a groundwork of corporeality and human belief. John the Baptist prophesied the coming of the Immaculate Jesus, and John saw in those days the spiritual idea as the Messiah, who had baptized with the Holy Ghost, divine science. The mission of Jesus confirmed prophecy and explained the so-called miracles of olden time as natural demonstrations of the divine power, demonstrations which were not understood. Jesus demonstrated Christ. 
he proved that Christ is the divine idea of God, the Holy Ghost or Comforter, revealing the divine principle, love, and leading into all truth. He expressed the highest type of divinity which a fleshly form could express in that age. Into the real and ideal man, the fleshly element cannot enter. Thus it is that Christ illustrates the coincidence or spiritual agreement between God and man in his image. How shall we declare him till in the language of the apostle, we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Matthew, and Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted forty days and forty nights, he was afterward and hungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city, and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple, and saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Jesus said unto him, it is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And saith unto him, All these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then said Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain and when he was set, his disciples came unto him and he opened his mouth and taught them saying, Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Because of the wondrous glory which God bestowed on his anointed, temptation, sin, sickness, and death had no terror for Jesus. Since Jesus must have been tempted in all points, he, the Immaculate, met and conquered sin in every form. Jesus of Nazareth was the most scientific man that ever trod the globe. He plunged beneath the material surface of things and found the spiritual cause. 
He claimed no intelligence, action, nor life separate from God. Christianity, as Jesus taught it, was not a creed, nor a system of ceremonies, nor a special gift from a ritualistic Jehovah. But it was the demonstration of divine love, casting out error and healing the sick, not merely in the name of Christ or truth, but in demonstration of truth, as must be the case in the cycles of divine light. The science Jesus taught and lived must triumph over all material beliefs about life, substance, and intelligence, and the multitudinous errors growing from such beliefs. The time cometh when the spiritual origin of man, the divine science, which ushered, ushered Jesus into human presence, will be understood and demonstrated. If we wish to follow Christ, truth, it must be in the way of God's appointing. Jesus said, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. Matthew. Then was brought unto him one possessed with a devil, blind and dumb, and he healed him insomuch that the blind and dumb both spake and saw. But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, This fellow doth not cast out devils, but by Beelzebub, the prince of the devils. And Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How shall then his kingdom stand? And if I, by Beelzebub, cast out devils, by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore, they shall be your judges. But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is come unto you. Wiser than his persecutors, Jesus said, If I by Beelzebub cast out devils, by whom do your children cast them out? Jesus was unselfish. His spirituality separated him from sensuousness and caused the selfish materialist to hate him. But it was this spirituality which enabled Jesus to heal the sick, cast out evil, and raise the dead. When speaking of God's children, not the children of men, Jesus said, the kingdom of God is within you. That is, truth and love reign in the real man, showing that man in God's image is unfallen and eternal. Jesus beheld in science the perfect man, who appeared to him where sinning mortal man appears to mortals. In this perfect man, the Savior saw God's own likeness, and this correct view of man healed the sick. Thus, Jesus taught that the kingdom of God is intact, universal, and that man is pure and holy. The Christ-like understanding of scientific being and divine healing includes a perfect principle and idea, perfect God and perfect man as the basis of thought and demonstration. Hold perpetually this thought, that it is the spiritual idea, the Holy Ghost and Christ, which enables you to demonstrate with scientific certainty the rule of healing, based upon its divine principle, love, underlying, overlying, and encompassing all true being. John, then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son, Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there, 
Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus saith unto her, Give me to drink. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again, but whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. The woman saith unto him, Sir, give me this water, that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. I perceive that thou art a prophet. I know that Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. Jesus saith unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. The woman then left her water pot and went her way into the city and saith to the men, Come, see a man which told me all things that ever I did. Is not this the Christ? The divinity of the Christ was made manifest in the humanity of Jesus. Through the magnitude of his human life, he demonstrated the divine life. Out of the amplitude of his pure affection, he defined love. With the affluence of truth, he vanquished error. The world acknowledged not his righteousness, seeing it not, but earth received the harmony his glorified example introduced. Who is ready to follow his teaching and example? All must sooner or later plant themselves in Christ, the true idea of God. Whatever inspires with wisdom, truth, or love, be it song, sermon, or science, blesses the human family with crumbs of comfort from Christ's table, feeding the hungry and giving living waters to the thirsty. Romans, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Acts. And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus to the synagogues, that if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven, and he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And Saul arose from the earth, and when his eyes were opened, he saw no man. And he was three days without sight, and neither did eat nor drink. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him, said the Lord in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Arise, 
and go into the street which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he prayeth and hath seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him that he might receive his sight. Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name again before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. And Ananias went his way and entered into the house and putting his hands on him said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, that appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest, hath sent me that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. And immediately there fell from his eyes as it had been scales, and he received sight forthwith and arose and was baptized. And straightway he preached Christ in the synagogues that he is the Son of God. Saul of Tarsus beheld the way, the Christ, or truth, only when his uncertain sense of right yielded to a spiritual sense, which is always right. Then the man was changed. Thought assumed a nobler outlook, and his life became more spiritual. He learned the wrong that he had done in persecuting Christians, whose religion he had not understood, and in humility he took the new name of Paul. He beheld for the first time the true idea of love and learned a lesson in divine science. As Paul says, there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus. The real man, being linked by science to his maker, mortals need only turn from sin and lose sight of mortal selfhood to find Christ, the real man in his relation to God, and to recognize the divine sonship. It is not well to imagine that Jesus demonstrated the divine power to heal only for a select number or for a limited period of time, since to all mankind and in every hour, divine love supplies all good. It is possible, yea, it is the duty and privilege of every child, man, and woman to follow in some degree the example of the Master by the demonstration of truth and life, of health and holiness. Romans, the Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. 1 John, and we know that the Son of God is come, and hath given us an understanding that we may know him that is true, and we are in him that is true, even in his Son, Jesus Christ, this is the true God and eternal life. 1 Thessalonians, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Glory be to God and peace to the struggling hearts. Christ hath rolled away the stone from the door of human hope and faith, and through the revelation and demonstration of life in God, hath elevated them to possible at one with the spiritual idea of man and his divine principle, love. And we solemnly promise to watch and pray for that mind to be in us which was also in Christ Jesus. 
to do unto others as we would have them do unto us, and to be merciful, just, and pure. Our third hymn this morning is number 221. O Jesus, our dear Master, thy works now understood. Reveal their full effulgence through love and brotherhood. Today, Christ's precious signs thy healing power makes plain. With joy may all obey thee, cast out sin and pain. Hymn 221.
I'll read the scientific statement of being from the Christian Science textbook. There is no life, truth, intelligence, nor substance in matter. All is infinite mind and its infinite manifestation, for God is all in all. Spirit is immortal truth. Matter is mortal error. Spirit is the real and eternal. Matter is the unreal and temporal. Spirit is God, and man is his image and likeness. Therefore, man is not material. He is spiritual. In the correlative scripture from 1 John, Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. Grace and peace be yours in fullest measure through the knowledge of God and Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen.